So Laura had mum and dad. Little Laura. She also has a brother over here. Okay. Before brother and Laura came along, mum was angry with men. She wanted a man she could manipulate and control and totally dominate. So what does she do? She gets a man who's like that, who's insipid, and, and she can totally dominate him and tell him what to do and tell him what to do and when to do it and how high to jump and all those kind of things, all the things she wanted, right? But of course this man she doesn't really find sexually attractive, of course, and she has a lot of rage towards him. And so eventually, over time, he's going to develop impotence and all sorts of issues as a result of that. And, of course, he doesn't feel connected to her because all he feels coming from her is rage. Now, Laura's mum also has a lot of jealousy and anger emotions towards, to towards um, women. Right? So she gives birth to a girl. Who's going to be the recipient of all that rage? The girl. So all the rage gets projected at the girl. So this girl grows up knowing that her mum hates her. She knows it. She doesn't even bother, mum never bothers even trying to hide it in this situation. So she knows. She's grown up in this rage. She knows that mum's in anger with her. Is it worth trying to get any nice emotions from mum? Totally pointless, isn't it? Totally pointless. So who does she try to get the nice emotion from? Dad. So mum, by projecting all this rage at Laura, created in Laura an addiction, a hole, an emotional hole, which Laura then wanted fulfilled by having a relationship, a different kind of relationship with her dad. So the hurt is closely related to the final facade, if you like, the desire for the man to give her a lot of things. But this man has a lot of pent-up rage about women. But Laura is wanting feelings from this man. So she's totally open to feeling these feelings from this man. He gives her some acknowledgement and some attention, but in the process... Laura is also open to receiving his sexual rage as well. Does that make sense? Totally open. Now, who does Laura forgive? It's fairly obvious, isn't it, Eloisa? Her mum. Forgive. Is it just her mum? No, her mum and her dad. Right, so she's got to forgive her mum and her dad. Yeah. Right? Yep. Okay. Does she have to forgive herself for creating the addiction? Or was it a conscious choice that she made to create the addiction? How old was she when she created this addiction? She was probably just pretty near born, right? Very young, right? Did she have an awareness that that's what she needed? Did she, have a, did she make a choice to do it? No. It was, the choice was made for her by the dynamic between the parents. Was it not? Yeah. So she's not making a conscious choice at this stage. So at this stage she doesn't really have to forgive herself for the fact that she created this addiction with her dad. She had this desire because she never really created the addiction with her dad. It was the dynamic between mum and dad that created that addiction, isn't it? So they are the people truly from God's perspective to blame for the addiction being present, are they not? Okay. Forgiveness is what is, has to re be required. Now, there's also mum felt favouritism towards her son because she wanted to groom him into being her ideal man. Right? There's also, she's got a lot of rage. And Dad also got a lot of sexual rage towards women. So what do you think Brother did? Eloisa? Took all of that out on Laura. 
Yeah, he sexually abused Laura. Now, does Laura have to repent for the fact that her brother sexually abused her? Yes or no? No. Why? Who created the desires in her brother to sexually abuse Laura? Ty? Um, her mum and her dad? Yes, and? And her brother. And her brother. See, it depends on the age of the brother, doesn't it? And the thing I haven't told you, he was 12 when it started. So he already had some developed will, did he not? Does that make sense? So, so mum, dad and brother have to repent towards Laura at some point. That's what they'll have to do from God's perspective. Now, can, can, can Laura rely on them ever doing it? No, she can't. So who also does Laura need to now forgive? Her brother. So, there's, so if you look at the forgiveness lines, which remember the other day we drew in red, the forgiveness lines are going to be some forgiveness towards her brother because he was somewhat or partly to blame for his actions towards her and mostly forgiveness between, before, before mum and dad and more towards mum than dad because mum created more of the problem. Does that make sense? And she's going to have to, at some point, forgive herself for creating the addictions she created as a part of the result, isn't she? Because she wasn't to blame for the creation of them. She did it at the insistence of someone else. Does that make sense to everyone? She did it at the insistence of someone else, of her parents, and she was not formed in her mind enough to make a choice, so she automatically created some things inside of herself at the insistence of someone else. So she needs to forgive herself for the fact that she did that. She doesn't have to repent for that. She needs to forgive herself for doing it. It's not her fault she did it, it's somebody else's fault she did it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Mary? So then... A lot of us have addictions in our hurt selves. We do. And as we grow, we continue to act in those addictions. Yes. And our will becomes our own. Yes. So I'm not, not now talking about Laura's adult life, am okay. I? I'm no. still talking about her child life. Yep. Yep. No, just felt that question hanging in the air, honey. No just worries. thought I'd <laughs> throw good. it out there. So, so we're now talking about, still talking about Laura's child life, all right? Does that make sense? Laura did not have a defined will when this dynamic occurred and when her addiction was created. And she didn't even have a defined will fully formed when her brother decided to start abusing her when she was 12, when he was 12. Does that make sense? But sometimes she didn't mind the abuse. Why? Because the addiction was already created from the openness to the damaged relationship between the parents. And she's got to forgive herself for that. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Now, let's roll forward 20 years. Laura's now attracted a man that is like a mixture of her dad and her brother. Only worse. And this man has a violent, sexually abusive nature. Right? And then she goes through a process of having a relationship and eventually she learns that she needs to leave this relationship, so she leaves, and then she attracts another man. And because the emotions are not dealt with, what kind of man would it have been? The same kind of man, only probably worse. Does that make sense? Because the emotions are still not dealt with. Same kind of man, only worse. 
Now, at this stage, after two relationships with the same kind of man, only worse, do you think she's probably going to make the same mistake a third time? No? So what's a highly likely she's going to do the third time? Eloisa? Probably find a man who's kind of opposite to that. Correct. Correct. This is what we do. We, try, we go through a couple of all the same kind of thing and then all of a sudden we go, I'm not doing that ever again. So there's still no emotional shift really, but now we've swung the pendulum completely opposite direction and, and gone for a man that's completely the opposite. Does that make sense? In other words, a man without sexual rage in him who she can, to a degree, manipulate or control with her sexuality. Does that make sense? So I'm sorry, Fab, that's you, as you probably are aware. Does that make sense to everyone? Now, so there's another, there's these two men that are abusive, uh, sexually abusive and so forth and all those things, and one's so abusive that, you know, he even punches her while she's pregnant to try and cause her to have an abortion of her own child. That's how abusive he is. That's a lot of rage, isn't it? Like inside of him, that's, that's pretty abusive. Then there's another. The, the last man she attracts is completely the opposite, like night and day opposite. You know, whatever is in them, not in him. The you know, flip side of, of opposite. Right? These are all cool, everybody likes them. This man's not as cool, you know, less people like him. Right the way through, you know, all these different, all of the, like she looks at the man that she was, you know, hurt by and goes, no, I'm not having a bar of that any, any more, any of that anymore. No. Now, every one of those relationships was an attraction that Laura had because of the denial of some emotion. Is that not true? So whom will she have to repent towards at some point? So now we're talking repentance. I think it was black, wasn't it, from the other day? Yep. Joy. Thank you. Um, all of the men that she attracted into her life, once she got to that age... Now, remember the definition of repentance. This occurs when we have been unloving uh. towards others or ourselves. Now, in the relationship with these two men, these two, yeah. was Laura unloving towards them? Don't. Just generally, if we talk about what the details I've given you. And she might have been specifically in different areas, but let's just generally, with the details I've already given you, do you, do you think a man who's violently abusive and sexually abusive is loving to her? No, he's obviously unloving to her, right? Yeah. Is that not true? Right, so surely he's got to repent for his behaviour at some point. Isn't that the case? Mm -hmm. Right? And so what does Laura have to repent for in that case? Towards what? Who did she hurt in that relationship? Who did she hurt is the clue. Yeah, now you start to get the idea. Who did she hurt? Let's go, Vanessa. So, so when she got into these relationships, who did she primarily hurt? Herself. herself and herself, can I and please clarify something? When yeah. I say herself, you mean the whole soul. So there's also going to be repentance towards her um, soulmate? Correct, of course. For the damage, because all those re abusive relationships that we've had caused damage to herself and have kept us away from our soulmate and yeah, that your soulmate is the other half of yourself that's right yourself, okay right? yeah just yeah. wanted to clarify that good -o. so the person she needs to repent towards with regard to this relationships are herself <laughs> she needs to repent for the fact that she chose these relationships for some reason and she's got to try and find the reasons right what, why, you know, why those reasons were attracted, those relationships were attracted. Now, in her relationship with the other guy, the one that she has, you know, is not abusive, who does she have to repent towards? Primarily. Uh, if we go, um, so I'm not telling you what you have to do here, Laura, by the way. It's just, uh, I'm using the terms like that. If we go to Kevin, thanks.
Um, she has to repent towards that gentleman. There. Okay. In this relationship, there's somebody else she had to be repentant towards because she had a child. Right? So she, her desire to stay, which she didn't do for very long, by the way, did you, Laura? Like, so what happened? As soon as the guy tries to harm you, what, what did you choose to do? As soon as, he, as soon as he tried to kill um, the child, um, I left. So, But then I took him back because he, he, he um, said that he would change. Yes. So, all so my you addictions. have to repent towards your child only for the time that you took him back. And, and then it was over when she was two months old. Right. For good. So it was a very short period of time, just a few months, and the relationship was finished all over. So it's a very short amount of repentance there. She, Laura did the right thing. Instead of staying with him for 20 years and having all that rage and abuse come at her and the child, the girl child, for that period of time, she did the right thing and chose to go, chose to leave. Does that make sense? So there's very little repentance there, is there? in this case, towards that, because she chose to do the most loving thing, right? Except for the time in between, when she chose to go back to him. It's only for that bit of time when she chose to do the unloving thing. Can you see? When you choose to do the loving thing, you can't then repent for things that happen because you chose to do the loving thing. Right? You can only repent for things when you chose to do the unloving thing. Can you see that? Good eye. Teresa. If she hadn't have taken that man back... If she hadn't have? Had, yeah. Yep. Um, would she still have needed to repent it to her child for no. attracting her? No. Because she did the right thing. She did the loving thing. But she There's other things she's got to repent for a child towards. But, but she attracted but the child that. into the relationship. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that normal? You, you have a relationship, you have sex, and sooner or later a child's going to come, come along. Isn't that what God designed? So there's no need for, to repent to a child you've conceived if it's in an unliving relationship. No. What for the act need? of conception itself. No, there's no need to repent towards her if you chose to do the loving thing. Like that's the proviso. It's a fairly big proviso, is it not? If you chose to do the loving thing, it's a big if. Like for most people, we don't choose to do the loving thing, and so of course we have things to repent towards our children about. No? There are other things that Laura and and beware here, Laura. Do please don't feel like I'm picking on you. Obviously, there's hurt in Laura right now from all of this. Can you understand why? Yes. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes. Like, of course there's going to be hurt. But as an adult, there's something that Laura chose to do that she needs to repent for. And what's that? And this applies to all of you, by the way. Felix? Hmm. Uh, she'll need to re repent about um, the damage she's done to herself by engaging the abusive relationships and um, yeah, is, is that what you meant? Yeah, but let's be more specific. What, what's the repentance about? Um, her choices, her, her unloving choices. What's her primary choice that actually caused all other thought choices? What's the primary choice, Karen? Karen? Uh, not to forgive her parents and her brother. Right, so at some point she chose to not feel that, all that hurt. And in a way, you're still choosing to not feel a lot of that hurt. You're choosing to feel some of it, but not at all, right, if you're honest with yourself. So, so the only thing you really need to repent about here, again, repent for everything that you've created, which is really a God thing, isn't it? Repenting for everything that I've created here because I chose to avoid hurt. See, everything we create is because of a choice we made to avoid hurt. If, if we'd actually felt our hurt and in the process of feeling our hurt, we would have repented, we would have forgiven the people who hurt us, then none of the hurt would have happened. 
none of the other hurt would have happened. Do you follow me? So we do need to go through the process of repenting for the fact that we chose to not feel our hurt. And that is a big thing to repent for. Trust me. Everyone will go through that. All of you have created hurt for other people and yourselves that is a direct result of your choice to not feel your own hurt. And that's something that you definitely need to repent for because it's something that you did that was unloving to others and yourself. Does that make sense? Here we go, Lily. Um, <clears throat> does Laura also need to forgive the abusive men? Or... Of course. Of oh, course. Right, okay. Yes. And then that would feed back into... But can you see if she had forgiven her parents and forgiven her brother, she wouldn't have even attracted the abusive men. Yeah. So, so now you can see that there's some forgiveness required of the abusive men, but there's also some repentance required of the fact that if I had dealt with my emotions earlier, then I probably wouldn't have attracted those relationships. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's a combination of emotions that need to be felt. Some of them will be repentant emotions and some of them will be forgiving emotions that need to occur. The repentant emotions towards herself for continuing to make a choice that was out of harmony with love of herself and the forgiving emotions towards them for the unloving choices that they made and that further damaged her. Yeah, that's more logical than my understanding from the other day. Okay. Everything God does is logical. Okay. So, so you need to understand that whenever something is more logical, it's probably right. <laughs> um, if we go Vanessa and then comes to Alan. Um, just following on from that, so if there's things we've chosen to not um, even be aware of damage that our parents have done, we could use the abusive relationship um, to look at the areas and then follow that down the rabbit hole if it was, you know, like exactly. what, what? The fact is that when Laura entered into these abusive relationships, she was not aware, she was in complete denial of all of her hurt emotions. That, that's probably a pretty true statement, isn't it? And in fact, these men promised you some addictive things that daddy was already giving you to a larger extent. And as a result, you felt attracted to them. And it was all about feeding her addictions in that place that these men, she initially attracted these men. So yes, these were attraction events to help her see that actually her relationship with her dad had a lot of things wrong with it. So now you could, with that awareness, as I said, go deeper, sort of use that um, forgiveness process just with those people to go allow yourself to get a bit deeper? Of course you could. Okay. Of course you could, yeah. Um, Al? I still have some confusions about the child because she had the, had the sex that brought the child yeah. And but um isn't sex a part of a decent relationship? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then there would be a time before she was attacked when that child would have been exposed to the violent kind of vibes from the father? Of course. But but so, Laura was already open to those violent vibes anyway. Right. So, so of would course she... they were coming from her brother or her father already. It's already there. And it was something that she was unaware of. Yeah, but but she still uh, the child still absorbed until she she did left. Certainly. Yeah, so is that does she need to repent for that little bit of the child in the no, womb? She needs to repent for the fact she never forgave. Like she chose in her adult life to never forgive dad and never forgive brother, and as a result, this interaction occurred. Okay, right. Does that make sense? Sort of. <laughs> Can you see how harsh you're being now? Because you're being pretty harsh. Right, yeah. Do you think God's that harsh? So when we... Are, Can you answer the question? Um, no, no, God's not that harsh. No, you do think God's that harsh. Oh, I do. That's the problem. Yes, yes, I do. But, but go on. It's good. Um, so, so the children that I've, I've attracted, um, 
The children you created. Uh, yeah, I created. You drew, drew to yourself by creating their bodies, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the bit you've got to... There, there's a number of things there. Let, we can talk about parent-child relationships in a minute as okay. a separate issue. But from a normal parent-child relationship, let's look at it. Let's say these are the parents and this is the child. What do the parents have to do? They have to repent for the fact, right, that they chose to hurt the child. And they have to repent for the fact that they chose to avoid their own process of forgiveness. Because if they hadn't avoided that process of forgiveness, they would never have hurt the child. Does that make sense? So you have to repent for every hurt in the child you purposefully created, and you have to repent for the fact that you chose to create those hurts to avoid your own pain. No? They are the things you need to repent about. If you repent about those things, you will be drawn to go back into forgiveness of the cause, which is all about your own parents. So remember these, this man had two parents, yes, in the previous generation. They are here, right? Mum and Dad. And obviously he had all of those feelings from them somewhere in his childhood, right? He chose to ignore it all. He chose to try to cover it all over and live in his facade. He chose to not forgive. His choice to not forgive created the dynamic with his daughter, which caused her damage. So he needs to repent for the fact that he chose to not forgive. In fact, the reality is all of us need to repent for the fact that we chose to not forgive. Because all of us have chosen to not forgive. Because if we would have, we would have no hurt emotion in us at all right at this point. Does that make sense, Alan? It does, but I just think of the damage that I did to my child as a result of all of that stuff. And, and also... Well, no, there's two points of damage you did to your child. Two. Yeah. One is when you chose to not forgive yep. your parents. Yeah. That's one point of yep. damage. And then there was each individual choice you made to hurt your child purposefully. Oh, so it's purposeful. It's not... Well, no, when I say purposely, I'm saying... Oh, no. <laughs> were you unloving towards your child? There was individual occasions when you were definitely unloving towards your child, right? Very much. I mean, I tried yep. to get rid of her. Yep. Yeah. So there are quite a lot of things to repent for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there's the one thing, which is the fact that you avoided forgiveness of all the things you needed to forgive. Mm. And then there's the multitude of things, which is what you did to harm the child specifically. Whether you knew about it or not, you mm. did things to harm the child specifically. Right. And you will need to repent for every one of those things. Yeah. And she didn't, she didn't make any of those harming um, decisions with her child. She didn't? No, no. I get it. Okay. No. Well, that's yeah. great because it means she chose to love. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. How are we doing? Getting a bit bogged down in all this, Susan. Let's go across and see. I'll ask now because I was confused the other day and I didn't ask. How does a child know to forgive? Like in Laura's case, which I think is quite similar to my own. Yeah, the child doesn't. No. The answer is the child doesn't know how to forgive. It was right. never modelled. It was never taught. It was never taught about love. Remember right, I said right at the start of our presentation that love was something we've never been educated about. So this child doesn't know that it should when it's a child. Right. right. But as it gets the use of its own will, what is, what is it then? Is that like teenage rebellion? Well, by the time we start growing up and we start changing, remember I've said it happens gradually again. From zero onwards, we, we're starting to learn the use of our will. There gets to be a time when you're mostly using your own will and not reflective about other people's will. Now, at that point, we've also chosen to continue to not forgive. We've made a choice. Now, that choice is certainly attributed to us 